You're watching a special edition of the best damn sports show, period. Since NASCAR's inception in the Southeast, the sport has thundered across the country, growing into the spectacle we see today. Gentlemen, start your engine! We'll take you through all the thrills. They touch, they touch! The one that they thought about under a Jeff Gordon oh. The chills. Dale Earnhardt Jr. using lessons learned from his father. The frontiers, Miles. I'm really proud of you. Thanks for everything, Dad. And the spills. Dale hits him. Earnhardt gets him. So get ready for the ride of your life. He did it! Incredible! Hop in and hammer down. Boogity, boogity, boogity! That's so racist! Best damn top 50 NASCAR moment. Starts right now. Hey, everybody, and welcome to yet another edition in our Top 50 library. And for the first time ever, we're actually hitting the racetrack and turning left from the sandy beaches of Daytona over 70 years ago to the nail-biting finishes on the Super Speedway today. We're putting you in the driver's seat, the most unforgettable NASCAR moments in history. Speaking of super tight finishes, let's wave the green flag on this countdown. Get you going with a finish that was literally this close. Now here's our studio analyst, Jeff Hammond, from NASCAR on Fox to take you through the countdown. Leading off at number 50, Edwards flipping first. You'll get one shot at turn three and four. It's going to be another one of those fantastic Atlanta finishes. And here they come, and I think Cole's got the advantage. The man. Yes! And that's after 500 miles of racing. <laughs> Number 49, Mr. September. 51 year old, handsome Harry Gant had one of the most memorable months in the history of NASCAR in September of 91. One more lap to go for 51 year old Harry Gant and his fourth consecutive Winston Cup win. We have seen history made here this afternoon and what Harry has done. Here it is, Gant wins the Goodies 500. That magical month long streak earned Gant a new nickname of Mr. September. Number 48, Kyle the Kid. Tomorrow the headlines will say Bush won a California. Here it is. But it'll be Kyle Bush. Kyle Bush wins in California. Yeah. Winner in the history of the NASCAR Next Talk Cup Series. Bush is 20 years, four months, and two days. Number 47, good old boys and girl. Janet Guthrie made history in 1977 when she became the first woman to earn a starting spot in the Daytona 500. Ladies and gentlemen, the starting lineup for the 19th annual Daytona 500. Starting 39th, the rookie driver in the race. From Miami, Florida, and New York City in the Kelly Girl Chevrolet, Janet Guthrie. Janet would finish 12th as the top rookie of the race. Number 46, one for Juan. Juan Pablo Montoya has a passion to succeed, and now this kid from Colombia is chasing big time success in the next Hell Cup series. Juan Pablo Montoya coming to the checker flag. Montoya wins at Sonoma. Amazing. Great job, everybody. Oh, yeah. Montoya became the first foreign born driver to win a cup race since Canadian Earl Ross did at Martinsville in 1974. Number 45, The Last Sand. With the new Super Speedway in the works at Daytona, the last beach race was held along the shores in 1958. This is Florida's and the country's greatest automotive show of stock car performance. Although his wipers had been blown back over the roof of his car, veteran Paul Goldsmith was able to see through the ocean spray and the wet sand to take the checkered flag. Goldsmith streets for the checkered flag and wins the closest race ever run on Daytona's beach and road course. Number 44, Bushwhack. Kyle Bush is the guy right here. He's, yep, the he's gonna he's gonna have the momentum and he's gonna get to the line. Coming to the checkers. Oh, oh whoa. that was close. I don't know. Wait for scoring. I think the 26 got him. Jamie McMurray has won the Pepsi 400. Great job, guys. 
number 43. Lucky, number 13. What I remember about the uh, 1998 Napa 500 in Atlanta was we had a good car throughout the day. And another mark is established and put in the record books. Jeff Gordon wins the Napa 500. It's his 13th victory of the year. Great battle, I believe, with Dale Jarrett. And we were able to pass him with just uh, a few laps to go and actually capture that 13th win and, and just really wrap up an amazing season for us. Number 42, the King and I. It was once thought that Richard Petty's record of seven cup championships was untouchable. That all changed in 1994. Earnhardt wins by a car lane, and Dale Earnhardt will celebrate his record tying seventh NASCAR Winston Cup championship with a victory here in Rockingham, North Carolina. Number 41, Pearson plays possum. Coming down past the start finish line. And Pearson backs off for Petty. Something wrong with Pearson. Petty takes the lead. But then Pearson backed off of it. David Pearson falling back on this very last lap of this fantastic race, but he seems to be closing up, Keith. To have stopped so suddenly, to have suddenly slowed up like that makes me think, though, Jackie, he backed off on purpose because obviously he's still got horsepower and he's now closed it right in behind Richard Petty as they turn and come for home. Ken Pearson slingshot him as he comes down low. Petty may run him into the fence and it's going to be Pearson winning it. An incredible, daring move and it paid off for David Pearson. Time to make our first pit stop, but don't go anywhere. Coming up, some million dollar moments, a lesson in fence climbing, and Darrell Walton's going to tell us why the FBI was visiting Rusty Wallace when the countdown continues. This is Jeff Hammett, and you're watching the best damn top 50 NASCAR moments. Welcome back. Now, in the mid 80s, NASCAR was looking to build on its growing popularity. So, from 1985 to 1997, its title sponsor offered a $1 million award for any driver who could win three of NASCAR's four Grand Slam events, that being the Daytona 500, the Winston 500, the Coca-Cola 600, and the Southern 500. Now, only two drivers claimed this Winston million, and when they did, they won more than just money, they made history. Number 40, thrill for a meal. The 97 Southern 500 came down to a fierce battle between Jeff Burton and Jeff Gordon. They bump, they head for turn number one, trading sheet metal. With victories at Charlotte and Daytona earlier that year, everyone knew what was on the line for Gordon. Jeff Burton will make a challenge onto the straightaway. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we did but it. Jeff Gordon oh. wins it. The Rainbow Warrior became just the second driver in NASCAR history to claim that king size check. Number 39. Awesome Bill. Bill Elliott's hopes of continuing his run toward the inaugural Winston Million appeared to break down at Talladega in 1985. Elliott has gone up in smoke. The car goes toward the bottom of the racetrack, still smoking heavily. In one of the most miraculous comebacks in NASCAR history, Awesome Bill from Dawsonville rallied from two laps down. Now that means a deficit of five miles at Talladega without the aid of a caution flag to win the race. Bill Elliott comes down and will win the Winston 500. What a payday he will have. Take this amazing comeback, couple it with a first place finish at Daytona back in February, and Elliott was headed for history. Number 38, Million Dollar Bill. Bill Elliott is going toward immortality. Bill Elliott gets the checkered flag. Bill Elliott has won an additional $1 million in 1985. Million Dollar Bill earned his nickname with this victory and gave NASCAR the cover story it had been craving. I'll tell you what, I can't believe it. The emotion of the moment is hard to describe. Mr. Long, your feelings. I think our feelings are that this is the greatest moment in sports anywhere. Number 37, Dancing with the King. You know what I remember about the spring race at Darlington in 1979? Uh, I was dancing with the King that day, baby. Richard Petty takes the lead again. The last two or three laps of that race. I bet we've passed each other 25 times. They're coming to turn three. Two more turns to go. Richard Petty still side by side. We go into turn three. There's only one way to pass somebody there, and that's through the crossover move. Now, I, I, Earnhardt made that famous, right? Well, if he made it famous, I showed him how. Petty can't hold the STP car low. Here comes Waltrip underneath. I let him go, and when he went in real hard, his car went up the hill, 
And when it did, I did the old crossover move. I drove right back underneath of him, and I beat him back to the line. It is Darrell Waltrip winning the Rebel 500. That's still one of my favorite finishes of all time. Number 36, Darlington debut. 25,000 fans crowded around Darlington Raceway in South Carolina on Labor Day weekend, 1950, to witness the first ever 500 mile stock car race. Running on asphalt presented a new challenge for a lot of these dirt track veterans and their tires would suffer. Crew chiefs were trying to track down fresh tires on passenger cars parked in the infield. After six punishing hours, Johnny Mance emerged victorious by strategically using truck tires on his pint-sized Plymouth. Number 35, climb to the top. Tommy Stewart has won at Daytona, and he's going to bring an Indianapolis tradition to the Daytona International Speedway. I'm too damn fat to be climbing fences. <laughs> uh, I had to do it once. Man, he is going to climb it. What's with this fence climbing thing? Hey, it's my deal, so anybody does now, they've copied me, so it's to do something different again. It's going all the way to the starter stand and salutes the fans here at New Hampshire. Cody Stewart wins the All State 400 at the Brickyard. Let the party begin. Number 34, Bush completes chase. It is the closest championship race in the 56 year history of NASCAR. Five drivers are still eligible. Trouble here at Homestead for the championship leader, Kurt Busch. Oh, he loses the, the wheel. Wow. Or loses the tire. And he just missed Clover in the end of that wall. That's going to be a caution. That's actually good luck for him. Kurt Busch in fifth and trying to hang on to that spot. If he stays there, he wins the title. Checkered flag is up. Kurt Busch is the 2004 NASCAR Nextel Cup Series champion. Number 33. Daytona dominance. You are watching an incredible moment in the history of motorsport. Here is a man winning the most difficult, the most prestigious stock car race there is. For the seventh time, is he running out of fuel? He's coming across the line slowly, but he takes the checkered flag. Here we have a man that's won the Daytona 500 seven times, and nobody else has won it twice. Number 32, Rusty Scuffle. Darrell Waldron in the fourth corner now. Wallace comes down low again. Oh, he pulls the tire. Waldron loses on his eighth tenth. Waldron spins it backwards across the grass as they come to the white flag. Oh. Come in there and he went, he backed out early and then here he comes. Bam! I was hot. Oh, Hammond and the crew was hot. And when the race is over, now that's when the fun started. Here comes old Rusty in to, you know, to turn in to go to the victory circle. And people start pushing and people start shoving and and uh, first thing you know, big fight broke out. As quite a fight broke out just outside of the winner's circle here. And then they had to get the FBI, the FBI, to stay at his house that night. They stayed downstairs. Rusty and his family stayed upstairs because people were threatening uh, Rusty's life. Number 31, Family Ties. Now that fellow that Kyle is holding is the fourth generation Petty, that's Adam. His great-grandfather, Lee Petty, a NASCAR champion in the 50s and winner of the first Daytona 500. His grandfather, the King, Richard Petty, winner of seven Daytona 500s and seven Winston Cups. His father, Kyle Petty, has been to Winston Cup victory lane as well. So now he's a fourth generation driver. That's a first for NASCAR and it may well be a first for any professional, major professional sport. Although he lost his life just a few weeks after making his cup debut, Adam's family honored his memory by creating the Victory Junction Gang Camp for chronically and terminally ill children. Coming up, Jeff Gordon recalls one of his most thrilling victories, and why do you think they call this guy the Intimidator? Find out next. Hi, I'm Richard Petty. Welcome back to the Top 50 NASCAR Moments. Number 30. Marlin Hook. The Daytona 500, the great American race, has come down to what will be a final, frantic, six-lap sprint to the checkered flag. Jeff Gordon leads. Sterling Marlin is second. Oh, oh. Jeff Gordon spinning down the inside. Gordon is in the glass. The race is not over. They're going right to red the flag game. the event. They're going to stop the field restart the race and try and settle it. Sterling Marlin is jumping out of his car. He's going around to look at the right front fender. But, oh, he can't do that. Hold it off a little bit. 
You're not allowed hey, to work on out. your car they under the red flag. Out. Checkered flag is up, and Ward Burton is going to win the 44th Daytona 500. Well, I seen Earnhardt doing it at Richmond one time. He got out and cleaned his windshield off, so I thought it was okay. I don't guess it was. Number 29, let it snow. They had snow earlier in the day here in Bristol, Tennessee. Oh, and the crews were having fun. They got 32 laps in, then it snowed again. That's it. Kyle Busch having fun with the fan. Five to go. The and and there. there. There he goes. And the 29, Kevin Harvick is going to go by him as well. It's not over. Oh, and, the, and look at this. The 24 just went around. And here comes the 29. Can he get to him? We're the still green. Still green. Still green. Busch wins. Oh, look at this. Snow Angels. doing the Snow Angels. Jeff Gordon out of his car, and he's not happy with Matt Kenson. That's just Bristol, baby. Now, that's one thing I will say. That's just Bristol. Number 28, Spin City. Known as Thunder Valley, clashes amongst drivers have long been part of the action at the world's fastest half mile in Bristol. There's Earnhardt working in second position. And a slow car right and then Earnhardt is right on his back foot. Let's see what strategy he pulls. No, Labonte is sideways but wins the race. Crashes and he wins anyway. How about that? Whoa! Someone has locked the cornflakes out of this Chevy. Congratulations on a great effort. <laughs> that was a finish, wasn't it? Number 27, reversal of fortune. Just four years later, same track, same two drivers, and another unforgettable finish. Well, Bonnie takes the lead. And meanwhile, Ricky Rudd trying to Oh, and Earnhardt spins him out. Oh, man. Dale Earnhardt takes the checkered flag. There will be talk about this one for a long time. Didn't mean to really turn around, meant to rattle his cage, Joe. Number 26, Richmond Rumble. Well, let me see. What do I remember about the 1986 Miller 400 at Richmond? I was already putting a check in the win column. Down to the inside. There's 10 to go. And I get a, I get a long, get a fender up under him and he cut me off. Now Waltham gets it to the side of Earnhardt again. Earnhardt's car skitters on the rear. He gathers it back in. I remember when I felt that nudge. <laughs> That's being polite to Mr. Earnhardt. It was more like a whack. Turn three, Earnhardt gets him. Hard into the wall goes Walshup. Hard goes Earnhardt. There's Del Walshup's Chevrolet, and it is torn up. Looking back, I should have just wrecked him. I should have just knocked him out of the way, put him in the fence, gone on and won the race. Fortunately, I didn't get hurt, and fortunately, he went with me. <laughs> Number 25, bye bye DEI. Today, it is with great honor to introduce my new boss for 2008, Mr. Rick Hendrick. I never really looked at, you know, Hendrick's Motorsports as our arch rival or, or, uh, or nemesis or what, what have you. Jeff has always been a real good friend of mine. Him and Dad were business partners on several things. Dad helped him a lot coming into the sport, so Jeff's always tried to, uh, you know, over the last six years has always tried to express to me that he's sort of repaying that favor back to my father by helping me in a lot of ways. Number 24, NASCAR goes Indy. What I remember from the inaugural Brickyard 494, uh, you know, it's just the fact that NASCAR was going to Indianapolis Motor Speedway for the first time. Jeff Gordon is about to write his name in the racing history book. Years from today when 79 stock car races have been run here, we'll remember the name. It was a spectacular day for me growing up in Indiana, going to high school there. Always wanted to race at Indianapolis. Jeff is screaming on his radio, back to the pit crew. Oh my God, I did it! I did it! Number 23, Life's a Beach. The dawn of Daytona took place in 1936 for the very first race in the sand. Over 50 qualifying cars are lined up in handicapped position, awaiting the starting signal that'll send them hurtling over the windswept Florida beaches. The course consisted of 1.5 miles of State Road A1A, short turns in the sand dune, 
and another 1.5 miles of sandy beach. Dirt track ace Milt Marion won the event, while fifth place went to NASCAR's founding father, Big Bill France. Number 22, kicking and screaming. Here he comes, outside, outside. Just like in Atlanta last March. Now he's not going to be able to do it, I don't think. They're side yes, by he side. Is. Is. Here he, he comes. Come. Here Jimmy Johnson. Jimmy Johnson. Jimmy Johnson. Jimmy Johnson. Jimmy Johnson. Jimmy Johnson. He did it. Three in a row, Jimmy Johnson. By two one hundredths of a second. I thought when he got beat off a of turn two, it was all over. But he drove it in on the outside and won it. Bobby's coming back ever so slightly, but it's too little too late. Number 21, TV's need for speed. Fox Sports, your new home for NASCAR. When uh, NASCAR signed with the networks, that took it to a whole nother level, just opened us up to a bigger audience, um, you know, really put us mainstream. Today's telecast is going to 60 countries around the world. The sport was talked about and mentioned in, in magazines and on network television shows. NASCAR really started growing at that time. It helped take us from a southern sport to a national sport. Gentlemen, start your engines. It really made us uh, a sport to be reckoned with. Still to come, a couple of the closest finishes in NASCAR history, plus the final victory of a career that may never be matched when the countdown continues. Hi, this is Jeff Hammond. Welcome back to the best damn top 50 NASCAR moments. Number 20, Mr. Restrictor Play. It was said by many people that Dale Earnhardt could actually see the air coming off cars in front of him and use it to his advantage. No doubt that that legend grew when he raced from 18th to a first with five laps to go at Talladega. Here comes impressive run I've ever seen. Number 19, split second showdown. Mark Martin is driving the race of his life. Here comes Harvick, the 29, with Matt Kenseth. Oh, Mark got loose. Mark got loose. And Harvick's getting a run off turn four. It's going to be a drag race all the way back to the start finish line. No caution. They're side by side, right to the line. Big crash. Here they come. Checkered flag. The Daytona 500. We got one car. And they're still on roof coming across the start finish line. Still Clint Boyer. Rocking. Boyer's on fire. Clint Boyer came across the start finish line on his roof. Man, this is a Daytona 500. Can you believe it? That was just a. Do you believe it? I can't believe it. Number 18, Polish victory lap. Is Alan Kowicki winning the inaugural Checker 500? from Phoenix International Raceway. There is Allen going down the backstretch the wrong way on the track. And that's the first time that I've ever seen the winner say out on the racetrack and go the wrong way. Just wanted to savor the victory, I guess. The Polish victory lap, as the wiki himself named it, was a salute to the fans for their support and has been carried on in tribute since Allen's untimely death in 1993. Number 17, the Waltrip Shuffle. What I remember most about the 1989 Daytona 500 is it was my 17th try. I'm in car 17. It's on the 17th. My name has 17 letters in it. We're in pit box number 17. The purse is $1.7 million. So I figure we're going to finish 17th is what I figured. The Daytona 500 belongs to Franklin, Tennessee's Darrell Waltrip. He's done it. Do you believe it? What an incredible finish. Oh, thank God! Oh, I won the Daytona 500! I won the Daytona 500! Wait, wait. This is the, this is the Daytona 500, isn't it? <laughs> you bet Don't it tell is. me it is! Thank God! Number 16, follow the leader. 1984's Winston 500 set a motorsport standard with 75 official lead changes in a 500-mile race. The passing was fast and furious as 13 different drivers traded the top spot. The most pivotal exchange came on the last lap when Cale Yarborough got by Harry Gant and held on for the win. 
Number 15, Petty for President. Gentlemen, start your engines. Richard drafts down to the bottom of the racetrack. They are door to door in the dog leg. They touch, coming to the trial, down to the line. It is, I can't call that one, it is so close. By the nose of the car, Richard Petty was just in front of Dale Yarbrough as they came across the line. Petty wins his 200th career NASCAR victory. I understand that no one in the whole history of racing has ever done that, or ever won 200 races. Number 14. Father drives best. Bobby Allison high. Davy Allison trying the inside move. Bobby Allison holds him off. They come to the stripe. And the winner of the 30th annual Great American Race. Bobby Allison, Davy Allison, his son in second. The Alabama gang has conquered the Daytona 500 in its 30th running. When I was a little kid. I always dreamed about racing with my dad and having a one-two finish, but I wanted him to be second. Number 13. DJ does it for dad. Here he comes, Earnhardt. It's the Dale and Dale show. It's become off the of turn four. You know who I'm pulling for. It's Dale Jarrett. Bring her to the inside, Dale. Don't let him get down there. He's, He's going to make it. Dale Jarrett's going to win the Daytona 500. Oh, right. Oh, look at Martha. Oh, dear. Oh, can you believe it? Way to go. Oh, hey. man. Happy Valentine's Day, Mrs. Jarrett. Number 12, the kid, the king, and the cup. One of the most significant races in NASCAR's long history was the season finale at Atlanta Motor Speedway in 1992. 21-year-old wonder boy Jeff Gordon made his cup debut on the same day the king, Richard Petty, ended his 35-year career. Involved in a crash early in the race, Petty's crew was able to salvage enough of his car to get the king back on the track for a finish and one final salute. Richard Petty is taking one final lap around this racetrack as the fans salute him and his career comes to an end. Entering the closing race, a record six drivers were eligible for the title. In what was the closest cup championship finish in NASCAR history, Alan Kowicki was able to lead one more lap over race winner Bill Elliott to take home the crown. Alan Kowicki is coming off of corner number four, knowing that he's winning the championship. There's the checkered flag for Alan. He's the champion for 92. Number 11, nose to nose. Who's going to get off? Here he comes. Here he comes. He's got him this time. It's going to be a drag race. Whoa. They touch. They touch. I didn't give him one room in one. And he didn't give me room out of four. It's the way it's supposed to be. I mean, this was some hard fought racing. Coming up, our countdown pays tribute to the driver that inspired so many. And Dale Earnhardt Jr. recalls his own storybook victory. That's when the best damn top 50 NASCAR moments return. Hi, I'm Dale Earnhardt Jr. and welcome back to the best damn top 50 NASCAR moments. Number 10, Chasing History. Gordon ties Earnhardt for career wins in next up cup race. Gordon, I got a special flag for you. Holding that three flag, uh, you know, it's certainly by no means say we're I'm as good or we're as good or, or even close, but uh, I'll tell you what, to honor him in, the, in that way, it, it really means a lot to me. I, I learned so much from him, and to even come close to anything he'd ever done in this sport is amazing to me. Number nine, heart sparks emotion. After mourning Dale Earnhardt's death, it is time to celebrate Earnhardt's life. He'd want us to right. go on, pick up the gauntlet, go on, guys, get it done. Park has the run off the high side. He clears the body, and Steve Park scores the second straight win for Earnhardt Incorporated on the second win of his career. With an Earnhardt hat in his hand, <laughs> Steve Park will drive to victory lane. It brought tears to my eyes. <laughs> Right. Dale's the one who taught me how to drive this place. And he told me to stay off the brakes, and we stayed off the brakes all day long and won the race. Number eight, earning the win. Earnhardt goes in high. That's going to lead to the roof for the body on the bottom. Here comes Bubba the body making a charge. They come toward the line. Who will it be? It is going to be. I don't know. I don't think it's going to look like Earnhardt just by a little bit. One of the closest finishes in the history.
history of NASCAR. Number seven, an angel among us. The car color may be white, the number changed, but there's no masking the desire and growing maturity of the late Dale Earnhardt's replacement, young Kevin Harvick. We had a photo finish here last race. We're getting ready for another one, folks. Gordon got loose. It's Harvick. Harvick by inches. Harvick by inches. So six one thousandths of a second. A replay of a year ago with Dale Earnhardt and Bobby Labonte. What could be more fitting? What could be more special? Believe in storybook endings, folks. This is one for the books. I kept praying for Dale to help us. None of us expected this is soon and the unfortunate circumstances. And all I got to say is this one's for Dale. Number six, Heavy Heart. This is the first Winston Cup race here at Daytona since Dale Earnhardt was killed in a crash back in February. Going into that weekend, everybody was like, you know, how are you going to do it? How are you going to feel? What's it going to be like? I love Daytona. I couldn't be mad at it. I really like this racetrack. It's one of my favorite tracks. And to win here uh, uh, would really mean a lot to me and the rest of the team as, as well. It's going to be Dale Earnhardt Jr. using lessons learned from his father from 6th to 1st and score the victory in the Pepsi 400. That's, uh, that's unbelievable. He was with me tonight. I, I don't know how I did it. He was there, and Mike will help me. I guess we're even now. Storybook ending. Oh, this is great. <laughs> I think, you know, in my career, when I look back on the races that I've won and the races that mean a lot to me, that one sticks out because it was so storybook. You know, to have lost my dad there and then go back the next race there and win. You know, you see that in movies, and I just couldn't believe I was living it. Still to come, the king himself. <laughs> And Dale Earnhardt Jr. return to take us through the final five best damn NASCAR moments of all time. We kick it into high gear next. Hi, this is Jeff Hammond. Welcome back to the best damn top 50 NASCAR moments. Number five, first photo finish. The debut of the Mammoth 2.5 mile super speedway provided one of the most fantastic finishes in NASCAR history. I started the race and run about eight to 10 laps and blew the engine, so I was down in the pits. Richard Petty was now leading the pit crew for his father, Lee Petty. Weatherly, a lap behind in number 48. Petty in 42, and Bochamp in 73, the leader. And it came down to the very last lap, and uh, you know, we could slip down to the start finish line so we see what's going on here. The checkered flag, the race is over. I felt like my dad had beat him about three foot, but all of a sudden, uh, Bill France said, no, Beauchamp won the race. They went three days before they uh, ever made a decision that my dad won the race. If Lee Petty had won the race on Monday, it had been on the, in the newspaper on Tuesday, you'd have forgot about it. It was a good start for NASCAR and for, for the Daytona 500 just because of the PR they got out of it. Number four, pass in the grass. 1987, the pass in the grass really wasn't even a pass in the grass. My daddy was trying to hold off Bill Elliott. He's going to go in on the outside of Earnhardt. They touch again. Tire smoke, side by side, hooked together. Bill had a way faster car, way better handling car, but my dad just stayed in front and kept blocking him, kept running into him, kept running him all over the racetrack, just whatever it took to get to keep him behind him. He closes again right in behind Earnhardt. And Earnhardt loses it, goes on the grass, comes back, and Earnhardt still got the lead. Incredible. Part of you start was like, man, that's dirty. Man, he's rough. Oh, that's over the line. And then lap after lap, you're like, wow, he might win this thing. The third running of the Winston, it's Earnhardt. Bill lost fun at night five car out and caused a big mess. And then he come up there and tried to spin me out twice. I didn't take it. Number three, Rex in effect. In 76, uh, the race came down to me and Pearson, as it did a bunch of times at Daytona or anywhere else. I knew David was going to pass me up the back stretch with a slingshot deal, and when he did, I was able to pull back under him, and I thought I'd cleared him, and I said, well, I need to move up to kind of block him so that he don't come back, but I missed it about six inches, okay? Richard Petty goes back in front. They both spin. They're in the wall. Petty is sliding, slamming in the wall. He's coming down toward the finish line. I spun to about probably 50 yards to the start finish line, and then I couldn't get the car started. Freddie trying to fire to come across the line. There was a car came down pit road, 
that straightened him out. Otherwise, he'd have hit the inside pit, pit wall. But anyhow, he kept going. Pearson is still running. David Pearson moving down through as they come to the stripe. The winner is car number 21. An unbelievable finish. Every time I remember it, I'm still running second. <laughs> it's a race to the checkered flag for the final two spots in our countdown. You've already seen fantastic finishes, the historic highlights, and the record-breaking performances. What possibly could be next? There's a fight. Plus, if you missed anything, we'll recap the first 48 right after this. Don't move. This is Jeff Hammond, and you're watching the best damn top 50 NASCAR moments. Welcome back. Hard to believe, but we only have two moments left in our NASCAR countdown. But just in case you missed the first 48, here's a quick look. Yes! Congress wins. Starting 39th, Janet Guthrie. That's amazing. Goldsmith speaks for the checkered flag. Jamie McMurray has won. Jeff Gordon wins the Napa 500. Dale Earnhardt's seventh NASCAR Winston Cup championship. It's going to be Pearson winning it. Jeff Gordon wins oh. it. Bill Elliott has won one million dollars. And Darrell Waltrip winning. Under the checkered flag comes Johnny Mann. But I'm too damn fat to be climbing fences. Kurt Busch, next L Cup champion. The man that's won the Daytona 500 seven times. Look at Moses on his day 10. He's a fourth generation driver. Oh, he can't do that. Snow hey, Angel. The snow angel. The money is sideways, but wins the race. Bernhardt spins him out. Hard into the wall goes Waltrip. My new boss for 2008, Mr. Rick Hendrick. Jeff Gordon, winner of the inaugural Brick Charge 400. Daytona Beach, Florida. The race is on. He did it. Your new home for NASCAR. That may be the most impressive run I've ever seen. Checkered flag. There is Allen going the wrong way on the track. The one in Daytona 500. Yarbrough goes by Allison. Patty wins his 200th. The Alabama gang has conquered the Daytona 500. Dale Jarrett's going to win the Daytona 500. Allen Kowicki, champion for 92. They touch, they touch. Gordon ties are hard. The frontiers are hard. Who will it be? Harvey by inches. Dale Earnhardt Jr. Scored book ending. Petty and Bochamp clock in the identical time. Earnhardt still got the lead. Incredible. They both spin. They're in the wall. And then there were two. For the second moment in our countdown, we turn to the one and only number three. Number two, the Intimidator's Day with the man who seeks to win his first 500 after 20 starts. It's not just that Dale Earnhardt hasn't won this race, it's how close he's come, how many times. My daddy had tried to win the Daytona 500 for so many years. He'd come really, really close, lost the tire on the last lap in 90. He runs second a bunch. He's got him to run this court, but it ain't gonna be good enough. I don't think it is either. The 1998 Daytona 500, I had a concussion because of the race before, the day before the Bush race, I had to hurt my head, but uh, so I was sitting home on the couch. 20 years of trying, 20 years of frustration. Dale Earnhardt will come to the caution flag to win the Daytona 500. Finally, every man on every crew has come out to the edge of pit lane to congratulate the man who has dominated everything there is to win in this sport, except this race until today. The Daytona 500 is ours. We've won it, we've won it, we've won it. I wish I'd have stuck around because I'd have liked to see no man's face. He was pretty happy after that one. Number one, lights, camera, action. Definitely the 1979 Daytona 500 has got to be number one on everybody's list. That was the one race that threw us in front of a national audience. Live from Daytona Beach, Florida, a CBS Sports Special, the 1979 Daytona 500. It was the first time it was shown on TV from flag to flag, and they had a big snowstorm on the East Coast, so if you're going to watch TV, you're going to watch the race. 100,000 people on their feet watching these two cars galvanize to them, looking for any signs of distress from either automobile as they lap Buddy Arrington in the Trioval. We was racing for third place because we were like 20 seconds behind. It came down to, you know, the last lap of the race. Uh, Kill and Donnie got the beating on each other. Oh, it's all come down to this. Out of turn two, Donnie Allison in first. Where will Kale make his move? He comes to the inside. Donnie Allison throws the block. Kale hits him. He slides. Donnie Allison slides. They hit again. They climb into the turn. They're hitting the wall. They're head on the wall. They slide down to the inside. Let's watch those third place cars. They're out of it. Who is going to win it? Me and Darrell 
race was racing for third place and going in the number three corner. There lays one and two car down on the infield. Here they come. Waltrip trying to slingshot. Petty is out in front at the line. Waltrip to the inside. Petty wins it. Richard Petty has won his sixth Daytona 500, and the crowd here are going absolutely mad. Then I think they had a little scuffle down there in the third corner, which made it look like wrestling. And there's a fight between Cale Yarborough and Donnie Allison. The tempers overflowing. They're angry. They know they have lost. And what a bitter defeat. I mean, you can't beat that, the fight in the infield uh, on national TV. You know, that's really <laughs> who we are, who we are to the bone. It was a good start for NASCAR uh, to get on TV. Could this have happened any better? <laughs> All right, definitely not a bad way for NASCAR to debut its first flag-to-flag -flag television coverage of a race. Now, since then, its broadcast exposure has exploded over 150 different countries in 33 different languages. Well, unfortunately, that ends our TV coverage of the top 50 NASCAR moments of all time. A question, comment, pretty simple. Email us, bestdam at foxsports.net. All right, we're going to see you next time. Until then, we'll see you in the winner's circle. Hi, I'm Darrell Waltrip, and you're watching the top 50 <laughs> You're watching the uh, that that the, that show, you know, that one with the bad word in it. You're watching the. My mind is just for the blank. Boogity boogity boogity. I'm Daryl Walsh. If you're watching the best 50 dash gun NASCAR top moments. <laughs> do I have to do that? <laughs>